Hi, uh, my name is Alexi, I, and today I'm going to talk about uh, evaluating BBRv2 on Batch. So I'm an infrastructure engineer. Um, I work at Dropbox. Previously, I worked at LinkedIn and Yandex. I was working on databases, storage systems, and right now on traffic slash networking. So um, we talk a lot in our tech blog about uh, all the uh, optimizations that we do to our traffic stack from like lower levels uh, on operating system driver side to a higher level of uh, intelligent DNS routing and library optimization. Uh, but uh, our team is very small and uh, we don't have a dedicated uh, kernel engineers. So we don't even have a kernel team currently. Uh, but we really like to experiment with different types of things. And uh, this talk will be uh, about one of these experiments. So it all started with BBRv1 uh, when we tried out hot new congestion control thing back in 2007. Um, so our first experiment with BBRv1 uh, showed great results. We saw uh, so the users that we thought were actually bottlenecked by their um, internet connection actually happened to be uh, bottlenecked on the, um, our congestion control. And when, when we rolled out um, BBRv1, we, we, we've seen great results from it. Uh, that was a very interesting uh, food for thought. And eventually we rolled out BBRv1 to our whole edge network. Over time though, we saw some downsides of BBRv1. Um, mainly, uh, probably all of you know that it's uh, not very fair to the rest of congestion control al algorithms. It has an insane packet loss of up to 6% or so on our boxes. Um, like all the, all the downsides started to be more and more apparent. Uh, still a good benefit in uh, performance though. So BBR developers also notice that. So th the, that is a list of issues with BBR we want straight from the developers. Uh, so they've identified um, uh, unfairness of BBRv1, they've identified uh, its aggressiveness, um, also some issues in aggregated paths when uh, there is ag uh, aggregations, and of course uh, no support for ECN. So um, they started to address that. Before we jump into the experimental results, couple of caveats about uh, all of you who own production systems just uh, all of you probably know, but just want to repeat it. Uh, please upgrade your kernels if you uh, support any, uh, operate any production uh, network. Like new kernel usually gives a lot of uh, performance. So the best thing for performance uh, is usually upgrading your kernel. Of course, there are occasional regressions. There are new vulnerabilities that are getting mitigated with new kernels and occasional slowdowns so from networking perspective. Um, each new kernel is generally faster than the previous one. Here is an example how uh, just for upgrading from our main production kernel 4.15 uh, to 5.3 test kernel that we used for BBRv2 test, we got around 15% performance increase, 15-20% performance increase just for free. Uh, that, that most likely related to improvements to BBRv1 and uh, like uh, they've added uh, optimizations for Wi-Fi and aggregation, but uh, regardless, each new kernel in each one of our tests usually performs better. Uh, second, upgrading your user space. So if you operate, again, any production, uh, any large-scale networks, having um, new user space helps a lot with troubleshooting. For example, uh, here is a IP, uh, IP route that comes with Ubuntu 16. Uh, and that is a relatively new IP route. Just notice that like all the new fields that we have, um, it's essential for troubleshooting, uh, especially any performance issues. So in the new IP route, for example, we see all the internal BBR data, uh, like basin gain and estimated R uh, mean RTT, uh, to worry, very, very useful things, like how much time you spend being receive window limited, send window limited, uh, like, that is uh, generally a very useful tools for you to be able to troubleshoot any issues with uh, this performance. And third one, uh, fair queue and scheduler, please use fair queue and scheduler if you can. Um, it's not for fair queue in itself, it's mostly for uh, pacing. 
spacing is very important in the modern network, especially high speed. Um, and where is there a lot of asymmetry between your speeds and your client speeds? Uh, we e and even within the backbone. So um, there is great talk from uh, Van Jacobson about beyond as fast as possible, and then sending data as fast as possible is not actually the uh, in theory is not actually the best thing you can do. But in practice, it also like there. There is an anecdote, for example, from our production network when we uh, saw a lot of like packet drops were a large problem in our networks and uh, our network engineer actually wanted to replace some of the shallow buffer switches with the more um, advanced ones uh, with uh, larger buffer spaces. But just by rolling out FQ, we get rid of all these drops, even on the backbone when there is not uh, as much uh, speed asymmetry. Anyway. Um, Use FQ. FQ uh, can actually improve your packet loss quite a bit. Uh, and before we jump into experimental results of BBRV2, a uh, couple of disclaimers and the test setup. So, first of all, it's uh, not a low latency experiment. All our flows that we were examining were around, uh, were filtered by one megabyte of transfer data. So, this is high throughput bulk, bulk flows. Uh, second, data is heavily aggregated. There are no like single TCP dump slash TCP trace drill downs. Uh, we have millions and millions of connections. Um, so uh, data is heavily aggregated. And of course, that is a real production test. So all the imperfections of traffic, uh, be it like duplicated packets, re heavy reordering paths with high packet loss, everything will be present in that, uh, in that data set. It's a real production traffic. Uh, even more specifically, we used one single pop in Tokyo, four boxes in it, uh, three, one boxes with all the kernel, all BBRV1, and three boxes with the new kernel uh, with Qubit, BBRV1, and BBRV2. Again, only bulk flows, uh, and we were looking at sampled SS data and sampled uh, Nginx log. Um, Yep, that's pretty much all of it. Uh, we'll be covering only new kernels uh, from now on. Uh, comparison between uh, all the new kernel BBRV1 code I've showed previously. So now we will be only looking at 5.3. Um, yeah, so, sorry, uh, the kernel is a bit old at that point. The presentation was for the first, um, first version of um, NetConf conference. Okay, so. And again, before we jump into the uh, practical results, a bit of theory. So that slide is straight from Neil's presentation from um, IETF. Um, it shows BBR design principles with all the new stuff from BBRv2 in bold. You can see that uh, there is a lot of stuff, but the general idea is uh, twofold. First, make it fair. Uh, make it more fair, uh, fairer to other congestion control protocols uh, and uh, put some notion of packet loss into the model. So uh, do uh, react quickly to change in condition. So the, these are two things and we'll see, um, we'll see how it actually affects um, experimental results. Here, here is a comparison from um, between BBRv1 and BBRv2 in a more table format. So we can see that there are no new additions to the uh, network model itself. There is also finally the explicit loss targets and early exit from startup if these uh, loss targets are either explicit or implicit are broken. Okay, and ECN, we did not test ECN in our test, but uh, it seems like it's BBRV2 can be a drop-in replacement for uh, DCTCP, but who knows. Okay, now uh, we jump into all the graphs. So first we're gonna go over properties that we see on the link, and then we will jump into what it, how does it actually affect the throughput, uh, throughput that we see on the link. So first thing that we do, even without like, uh, First thing that we noticed, even without actually looking at the uh, per connection stats, is that when we deploy BBR 
uh, to code, we see way lower packet loss. So immediately packet loss drops a lot. Uh, it's still higher than cubic, uh, but I would assume that that is expected. Uh, if we look deeper into our uh, retransmission percentage, we uh, on per connection level. So we see that in generally BBRV2 looks way better on PDF uh, graphs. The only caveat is uh, there are some connections that are that have higher packet loss at 60%, sometimes 80% or even 90. So there is something is definitely wrong there. Besides that uh, small percentage of um, connections with really bad packet loss, everything else looks uh, looks really good. I would su suspect it's some kind of bug there, but I'm not sure. Uh, if we compare to Cubic, um, BBRV2 has still higher connect, uh, packet loss than um, Cubic on per connection basis. Uh, still, I would assume that is expected given uh, its tolerance uh, to some packet loss. So it, since it has that packet loss uh, target, I would assume it is fine for it to have higher packet loss, except for that 60% case and above. Uh, if we look at the uh, heat map of that, we can see that the uh, VBR, um, v, V1 on the top, V2 on the bottom, it's more, V2 is more squashed along all RTT, so it's not, uh, it's very fairly distributed. So there is no uh, correlation between like packet loss and, um, and the RTT. Then we can look into in-flight packets and we see that BBRV1 has way less packets in flight. Uh, that is actually uh, one of the properties of uh, BBRV2 model. So they have uh, max, uh, max in flight now. And that in theory, that should be like that. And in pra practice actually proves that. Uh, what's even more interesting that BBRV2 has less packets in flight than Cubic, which makes it better, which is quite uh, quite interesting. So less buffer bloat from um, BBRV2. Uh, if we plot uh, RTT versus in flight, in BBRV2 we can see that general upward trend with more like data on the wire depending on RTT. Uh, and uh, in v, uh, V2, we can actually see it more down to earth. Uh, there is one line, a uh, strange line that um, dependency between uh, RTT and um, in-flight segments, which, uh, which looks weird. Besides that, it's all squished, normally distributed. And if we compare it to uh, cubic, even we, we can see that it's still better. It's more, uh, more down to earth. So uh, even compared to cubic in flight, looks way better. On RTT wise, we did not look in RTT too much because these are bulk flows. But since we still collected that data, uh, we know that uh, BBRV2 RTTs are better than BBRV1 uh, based on PDFs, and uh, but still worse than uh, cubic for some reason. That may be uh, some bug in our code because we see lower in flight, but for some reason RTTs are. Uh, are higher from our uh, from our perspective. Oh, one one more interesting graph is about uh, receive window limiter. That's in, that new stat from new uh, IT route uh, version SS version. We see that uh, BBRV two is way uh, way less um, less often window uh, limited receive window limited, well, which is also great. That means we burst uh, less on the wire and. Uh, leave some headroom, which which is good. It's even uh, less uh, receive window limited than uh, cubic, which is again uh, quite quite good. We burst less, uh, we buffer bloat less. So all of these theoretical properties lead to some interesting practical results in terms of bandwidth. So what we saw is all different facets of the of the traffic, and now we can actually see what what the bandwidth looks like. And bandwidth-wise, uh, BBRV2 is slower, uh, and we can see that like the it is it is slower in the the. 
we can see that it is slower in that um, high, uh, like low low performance range with on low speeds, it is uh, slower than BBR V2. So, and on higher connection speeds, it is actually quite close to BBR V2. Uh, we have hard cut off here at around uh, one, uh, I think one one thirty five or or so, but uh, the further down the line, data gets more noisy, but we're, uh, very in line. So the on higher speeds, BBR V two actually very comparable to BBR V one. On lower speeds, uh, speeds where congestion is more uh, likely, uh, we we see that BBR V two is slower. Um, okay, and uh, compared to cubic. Compared to cubic, BBR V2 is faster. And you can see that on the further side of the graph, the, the faster connection of user becomes, uh, the more is the difference. So the more, uh, the faster is user's connection, the more benefit you get from BBR V2 without uh, like increasing congestion uh, that much. So uh, as you can see, it just gets further and further apart uh, as the uh, connection speed grows. And if you look at good put from Nginx point of view, so the, these are based on Nginx blog, we can see that on lower speeds, uh, BBR V2 is way closer to uh, cubic, but on higher uh, connection speeds, it's actually closer to uh, BBR V2 performance. So uh, you can see here that balance that uh, it became more cubic friendly uh, and uh, at the same time, it's way faster for users who can actually uh, use that speed. So um, as far for conclusions, uh, the, that is initial slide with all the issues highlighted uh, for BBM V1. Uh, we can actually prove that most of them were fixed, uh, except for ECN that we did not test. Everything else uh, from throughput perspective, it does look way uh, fairer. Um, and uh, packet loss is reduced and the uh, throughput variation is reduced. So um, all of that, our experimental results show that bandwidth is comparable to cubic on, for users that have lower internet speeds and way better um, and comparable to BBRV1 uh, for users with higher internet speeds. Lower packet loss than the BBRV1, still a bit higher than cubic. Uh, that uh, data in flight is comparable, uh, uh, sorry, slightly lower than cubic and way lower than BBRV1. Uh, yeah, R better RTT fairness and uh, slightly lower RTT than BBRV1. Overall, across all of that, I can say that from our test results, it seems like BBRV2 is drop in replacement for BBRV1, which is better in all. Um, all the cases, the only weird thing that we saw is that uh, that small amount of connections with more than 60% um, uh, packet loss. Except that it's literally drop-in replacement that is better in all the respects. Uh, it may actually be even considered a, a relatively good drop-in replacement for cubic, especially if you have uh, high-performance clients, they will benefit from BBRV1 compared to qubit. Um, and uh, depending on how we see and test go, uh, goes in our data center, if we ever get to do that, uh, maybe we can prove that uh, BBRV1 can be a drop-in replacement for DCTCT, but that's, that's way further out. So recently I was troubleshooting um, TCP performance in Windows. And very small note uh, for all of you software engineers out here. Like Windows Net Shell Trace is way ahead of what we have in uh, in Linux world. So Net Shell Trace, uh, Net Sh Trace, for those who don't know, it's actually uh, it collects data like TCP dump, um, but also puts in all data from all the various subsystems in the kernel. So you not only have packet trace, you also have all the events that happening inside the kernel. You have um, I, I think uh, async subsystem events like uh, IOCP events, for example. You have socket events like writes and reads. You have uh, data from uh, what you usually get from TCP info or Netlink about congestion windows um, and properties of, of the TCP connection. You, you get reordering, you get uh, 
some memory subsystem events like buffers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like uh, all the things in one place, you run natural trace, you get all the things that you need for troubleshooting. While in Linux world, uh, when you collect just plain TCP dump, it is the same TCP dump that was uh, 20 years ago. Uh, what you get is uh, data on the wire where you need to infer what actually happened into, in the kernel. And uh, like based on SACs, based on uh, some, other, uh, some other weird things like window advertisement changes, like there is, there is not enough uh, debug da data in there. Uh, if we see in BBRV2 code, they added a lot of debugging code uh, just for ease of troubleshooting. Um, nowadays, with eBPF, we can actually get a, an, a utility we can create as a community and a utility that can pipe all the relevant data from all the subsystems in the kernel um, inside the trace, um, as for example, comments in TCP dump. Uh, that would be quite useful for any performance uh, related uh, either research like we did or uh, any performance related troubleshooting. So please, for those of you who ne who'd never tried like uh, touching Windows, please look into that shell trace and uh, message analyzer. They are great. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much all of it. Uh, now Q&A. Okay, thanks for a great talk. Uh, okay, so I guess we have someone ready to ask the question. Go ahead. Um, then I'll read out this question on the chat. Um, re on the higher RTT than Qubit, can you please elaborate what do you mean by bug in our code? Is that the stats gathering code in this yeah. test? Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah, it, it is likely the bug in our code. Um, I was recently reviewing it. Um, uh, SS basically provides two sets of information for BBR. It has MRTT from BBR and MRTT from the uh, a generic mean RTT. So I think uh, we misplaced these two and for cubic because it doesn't provide uh, MRTT from BBR cells because it's cubic. Um, uh, we actually compare two different sets of data that may uh, that may uh, actually result in that kind of inconsistency. So I would actually uh, scratch that part from the presentation about comparing a uh, specific uh, BBR to BB, uh, BBR one to BBR v two comparison is right. BBR uh, versus cubic may be a bug in our code just because we use two different sets of data and I haven't looked at how they are implemented in kernel. How does uh, BBR estimate uh, MRTT in its code and how- uh, uh, The last remaining question on your talk was that when mm -hmm. you were running the experiment, let's say for BBR v2, uh, was the other traffic still using cubic? So maybe you are not, you are seeing an effect of like the BBR v2 versus BBR, uh, and cubic competition. I think that was the intention of the question. Okay, so in our tests, uh, bottleneck is uh, way outside of our network. Bottleneck usually is uh, network equipment or the polisher slash shaper on the client side um, or closer to client. So there, there, is in, there will be some competition uh, depending on users' um, usage between BBRv1, BBRv2, and um, Cubic and on these links. Uh, that, that's true. We just uh, don't know what, what is the proportion. Depending on what uh, sites user uses, um, there will be some competition. So, of course, us change and congestion control. Um, changes the mix of that competition. Just like if Google changes uh, congestion control on YouTube, that changes the mix of that competition on the bottleneck, um, which is way closer to the client. On our networks, we don't, uh, since we are not using BBRv2 internally inside our networks, we, uh, we cannot say wh what is happening when uh, these uh, TCP congestion control actually compete directly on our network in known proportions, please. Okay, great. 
And then um, I just remembered another question uh, before uh, the outage. Um, the I think the the data that on the receive limited um, that we are seeing BBRV2 uh, has lower receive limited uh, cases, probably because it has lower in-flight in general. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 that, that is true that, uh, that, that, that theory correlates uh, very well with um, uh, with the data, though at the same time, like just having lower receive window limit does not uh, mean much by itself. Like if you are zero percent receive uh, window limited, you are probably doing something wrong. So um, just by uh, just by saying that it is lower um, doesn't say much. In the meantime, if it's the full graph is kind of lower, then it is probably a, a good thing. Um, yeah, it, it means less buffer bloat. Uh, uh, yep. Okay, great. Um, I think I, last question, um, clarify, clarifying question. When you say cubic, is this cubic plus P50 fast or cubic plus FQ? Oh yeah, uh, that that's a very good one. Yes, uh, everywhere we use uh, cubic plus FQ. So FQ with spacing. Uh, so that is a very, um, uh, I would say, even specifically, it's cubic with FQ with spacing without the, I think, high start packet train um, heuristic. I think that's that's a full technical definition of it. Okay, sounds good. It's glad to see that uh, FQ is used uh, in um, any kind, any congestion control. I think it's definitely oh, helped. Yeah. yeah, one small note. The, the, the thing that I've mentioned about switches running out of, um, of buffer space and producing drops even on our like uh, edge network, like top of the rack switches for edge racks. Uh, the problem I've described when we rolled out FQ and these packet drop, uh, drops disappeared, um, well, basically the first hop of our network, uh, it happened even with Qubit. So it wasn't BBRV1 or BBRV2 test even, it was preparation for initial BBRV1 rollout when we first rolled out um, pacing everywhere. And then we started rolling out uh, the BBRV1 itself. So even with uh, Qubit, uh, FQ is very, very useful. Um, it does, uh, or pacing in FQ is very, very useful. Okay, I agree, sounds good. Um, all right, so I think for that, uh, thank you for your talk.